My, my guest today is uh, John Whitbeck, an international lawyer uh, specialized in conflict resolution. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitbeck, for joining us here on, on France 24. Besides uh, pledging to rebuild Gaza, is there another um, message behind this conference? I don't know what message is behind it in, in the eyes and minds of those who've scheduled it. Uh, I think the message that should be behind it is how to end, really end the occupation so that we don't have these conferences every two years after the international community has poured billions of dollars into building Gaza infrastructure and then Israel destroys what the uh, international community and particularly Europe has built. I would hope that Operation Protective Shield and all the people who died in it would be a wake-up call that we have to get off the merry-go-round of a perpetual peace process that's intended, at least in the eyes of the Americans who've monopolized it, to maintain the occupation and lead nowhere. So, so from your perspective, uh, it's impossible to dissociate the end of Operation Protective Edge and the long-term peace process. Well, it's possible, but it's certainly not desirable. I mean, I would hope that somebody at this conference would be thinking seriously about how to actually end the occupation, you know, which is in its 48th year now. And I think what may be more interesting tomorrow than what happens in Cairo is what happens in London when the British Parliament votes on an admittedly non-binding motion that the United Kingdom should recognize the state of Palestine, as 134 other countries have, without waiting for Israel's permission to do so. And that is coming after Sweden last week said that it would recognize Palestine. And I think really the only hope of something constructive is if the Europeans, all of them, the 20 European Union countries that haven't recognized Palestine, do so. And then make clear that if Israel has not complied with international law and relevant UN resolutions, and fully withdrawn from the occupied state of Palestine, by a specific date, there will be economic sanctions, and they'll be increased until Israel does comply with international law and UN resolutions and withdraws fully. I know that's not likely, but that's, I think, the only hope, and it's available. It's nonviolent. It's just a question of political will for the Europeans. Now. The, the way the, this last war ended, I mean, there have been three in the last six years, right? So in the, the way the last war ended, you know, there's concessions to uh, create, uh, to ease crossings into Israel, um, to allow reconstruction materials in, to enlarge uh, fishing zones. Are these measures enough to avoid another war in a few no, years? No, no, clearly not. And in the past, uh, even what Israel has agreed to hasn't happened in, in, in these respects which you've just mentioned. Um, th th these are just, I mean, there are ways to make life a little less miserable if, if, if they're actually followed through on in Gaza, but they don't address the problem. You know, they, they just kick it down the road until the next time. So for you, it's the international recognition of the, of the Palestinian state that would have more leverage than than anything else that's being seriously talked about at this point. Um, I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm afraid that it's going to be like the old American film Groundhog Day, where people just keep doing the same thing that's failed for 20 years or more and running around effectively on, you know, to mix metaphors, the hamster wheel of the perpetual peace process, more negotiations without preconditions, killing time, the world needs to, to set new rules, level the playing field, if there's any hope that we're not going to be seeing more of these horrible, bloody outbreaks of violence in the future. And uh, if the Palestinians are going to be free with less than 50 years of belligerent occupation. Is that uh, one last question? Is, is that likely, given the government in Israel and given the Palestinian uh, leadership? No, it's very unlikely, because until now, European governments have shown that they're more interested in having good, smooth, untroubled relations with the United States and Israel 
than they are in actually bringing peace with some measure of justice to the Middle East. I would hope that would change. I'm not honestly uh, betting that it will, but I think people need to think about the possibility. All right. Thank you very much, uh, John Woodbeck, for joining us uh, live on uh, France 24 to talk about the, the donor conference taking place uh, in Cairo 